a devastating earthquake that tore through Turkey and Syria, has claimed more than 2,300 lives, and rescuers are frantically trying to pull survivors from the rubble on both sides of the border. Around 4 a.m. on Monday, one of the strongest earthquakes to hit the area in a century jolted residents out of their beds and sent tremors as far as Lebanon and Israel. According to Turkey's Disaster and Emergency Management Agency, at least 1,498 people have died and thousands have been hurt, a fad. Nearby Syria has experienced at least 820 fatalities. 430 people have died in government-controlled areas, mostly in Aleppo, Hama, Latakia, and Tartus, according to the Syrian state news agency SANA. The Syria Civil Defense, also known as the White Helmets Group, reported 390 fatalities in opposition-held areas. In the midst of a bloody civil war that started in 2011, anti-government forces control a large portion of northwest Syria, which borders Turkey. According to the United States Geological Survey, USGS, the 7.8 magnitude earthquake's epicenter was 24.1 kilometers, 14. 9 miles beneath the surface, 23 kilometers, 14.2 miles east of Nidagi in Turkey's Gaziantep province. According to the USGS, a significant aftershock with a magnitude of 7.5 struck Turkey about nine hours later. Nearly 95 kilometers, 59 miles north of the initial earthquake, that shock occurred. Video from the scene in Turkey showed people waiting for assistance as day broke over rows of collapsed buildings, some with apartments exposed to the elements. According to the USGS, Monday's earthquake is thought to be the strongest to hit Turkey since 1939, when an earthquake of the same magnitude killed 30,000 people. Less than five earthquakes of this size strike the planet each year on average, making them extremely uncommon events. Turkey has experienced seven earthquakes of magnitude 7.0 or higher in the previous 25 years. According to Carl Lang, an assistant professor at Georgia Tech University's School of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences, the earthquake-prone region was hit on Monday. It's a very big fault zone, but this is the biggest earthquake they've had recently, according to Lang. With the earthquake hit early on Monday, Gaziantep-based journalist Aide Kurdi, who was visiting his parents at the time, said, it felt like it would never be over. Kurdi and his parents left their house after the shaking subsided while they were still in their pajamas, he claimed. They waited outside in the rain for about 30 minutes while he went back inside to get coats and boots, there were several inches of snow on the ground. Southern and central Turkey have both experienced powerful aftershocks. A 6.7 magnitude aftershock struck about 32 kilometers, 20 miles, northwest of the main earthquake's epicenter about 11 minutes later. 19 minutes after the initial quake, a powerful aftershock with a magnitude of 5.6 was felt. After the 7.8 magnitude earthquake, Kurdi claimed there were up to eight very strong aftershocks in less than a minute, which caused items in his home to fall to the ground. He claimed that many of his neighbors had evacuated after the earthquake. As day broke in Turkey, images revealing the disaster's true scope appeared. Metal rods have been scattered throughout the streets, and entire buildings have been flattened. Bulldozers are clearing the debris as cars topple over. Heavy damage has been done to Gaziantep Castle. According to CNN meteorologists, a winter storm in the area is making the disaster worse. This affects hundreds of thousands of people. It's chilly. There is rain. Roads may be affected, which could affect your access to food, a source of income, and the ability to care for your family and children, according to CNN meteorologist Karen McGinnis. Anything growing in this region, including crops, will also be affected. The effects of this will be felt throughout this area for weeks and months. Suleyman Soylu, Turkey's interior minister, said that teams have been sent to the south of the nation to conduct search and rescue operations. The European Union's humanitarian program, the Emergency Response Coordination Center, ERCC, said that the disaster agency, AFAD, had asked for assistance from abroad. According to its governor, Ali Erlikaya, nearly 1,000 search and rescue volunteers, along with dogs, trucks, and aid, have been sent from Istanbul, the largest city in Turkey. The director general of the World Health Organization tweeted that the organization has activated its network of emergency medical teams in the two nations to help those impacted by the earthquake. In his televised speech, Erdogan also mentioned that the European Union, NATO, and numerous other nations had offered their assistance. David Gull, the governor of Gaziantep, tweeted that the earthquake was felt strongly in our city, and urged people to wait outside of their homes and maintain composure. Let's calmly wait outside, please. Don't let's drive our cars. Do not congest the main thoroughfares. Let's not overuse the phones, he advised. According to a sly aid in Tazbis, a fellow at the Brookings Institute, there are a number of small and medium-sized cities in the province of Gaziantep that have sizable refugee populations. These places aren't all that well off. Some urban areas are wealthier than others. However, other areas that are being discussed that appear to have been devastated are located in relatively lower income areas, she added. Rescuers can be seen in video from Diyarbakir, a city northeast of Gaziantep, working feverishly to extricate survivors from the rubble. According to Erdogan, the earthquake was felt throughout much of the nation.
I send my warmest condolences to all of our citizens who were impacted by the earthquake that struck Karam and Mara and was felt throughout much of our nation. Under the direction of AFAD, all of our pertinent units are on alert, Erdogan stated on Twitter. As world leaders awoke to the news of the fatal earthquake on Monday morning, messages of sympathy and support began to flood in. National Security Advisor for the White House Jake Sullivan stated that the U.S. was profoundly concerned about the devastation in Turkey and Syria. I have spoken with Turkish officials to let them know that we are prepared to offer any assistance that may be required. In collaboration with Turkey, we'll keep a close eye on the situation, Sullivan tweeted.